folks uh, hello folks in this video we I gonna show you how you can manage your server through ILO uh, in this video uh, I gonna show you how you can create your rate car rate through ILO uh, ILO is that kind of uh, console access through web interface <coughs> In, in HP we have ILO, in uh, Dell we have ID Rack and with some other provider like uh, uh, in, in Micro, Sun Micro and, uh, and OVH servers uh, they offer IPMI access to the server. <coughs> uh, this is a web uh, view of your uh, server. It is seem like uh, that you are accessing or you you have physical access to the to your hardware devices. Uh, uh, your uh, this is uh, this is the IDRAC IP or ILO IP. Uh, we can access it uh, with uh, HTTPS along with some credentials. So uh, this is our server console. <coughs> we are currently using the Proliant uh, DL380 Gen8 server. Uh, like this is this is all all the configuration of the server like this is the product name uh, you can you can view some health information from here even you can see the ILO logs from here uh, who access and what kind of operation has been done so you, you can you can audit your uh, access uh, also integrated management logs as well <coughs> uh, so you can you can go through with that diagnostic you can you can see uh, that uh, if if you found any kind of issue at your hardware level you can found it from here and uh, look and the thing which i'm going to show you uh, is uh, how we can manage our server power meter and everything uh, and also we can do the uh, remote console <coughs> it is same like that you that you connected your uh, LCD or LED or something like output device to your server so uh, it offers uh, some uh, some type of like uh, it offers the .NET it offers the HTML5 console it, 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 offer, it also offers the web UI console like Java IRC console so I normally prefer to go with uh, this is this is HPI lab uh, but uh, it, that will happen only in case that you will uh, currently because I'm using uh, the VPN so uh, on your mobile app mobile app you must need to have some uh, hp or like vpn access <coughs> i would like to go with uh, java irc console uh, if i click over here uh, then i can s uh, save it and it will be asking me for to open up uh, gnlp console because i have some security in place so it won't allow me uh, unauthorized so it is very safe to access you can you can access it uh, <coughs> so uh, at here you will you will see your uh, server setup you can you can do the power reset you can mount the uh, ISO drives and like if you have some uh, some sort of ISO images and you want to install from local then then you can do it from here as well uh, even you can you can have some keystroke uh, like call control at all delete num log and uh, that's of these operation you can perform from here uh, from here you can use the image file you can even use the remote uh, ISO image file also you can use the uh, create disk image of your whole system and you can use image removable, removable media that is that has been attached to it so for now I'm just resetting it uh, resetting it the server so I can go to the uh, system bios uh, it will seem as like uh, we are managing our server <coughs> uh, through uh, screen so you can see that uh, I've been managing server through console and it will displaying over here it is more like like i'm connect, i have connected to, to lcd so i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna into the rate controller so you know from the rate controller i'm gonna install uh, i'm gonna re i'm gonna recreate the rate uh, five 
so it will take a while because it's a physical server and it would take some time to <clears throat> so the length of the video could go long uh, I can't have op uh, like I don't have option to pause the video so I'm just going it with the flow going with the flow so uh, this is this is the console of uh, the server when the server is booting up it uh, it is doing some calibration for its thermal devices and also the power devices it will do all the operation you will, you can monitor all the operation from here where as you are monitoring the server uh, from the physical console so it will take a while uh, meanwhile we can see uh, the other options as well like uh, uh, you can uh, see okay we are we are very near to the right configuration console uh, it will uh, like uh, if you want to go to the setup you can F9 you can uh, go to the uh, boot menu you can press the uh, F11 but uh, my target is go to the red smart red utility so I'm gonna press F5 in because I need to go to the uh, smart array I'm just pressing it F5 so it will take me to uh, the smart array console <coughs> Uh, that is pretty interesting for me because I, when I was uh, first interact with this uh, rate controller utility, I was amazed that uh, how cool is that, and very cool, cool UI. Uh, that was very uh, like uh, good to watch, good to interact. Very, very decent UI. It has. It will take a while because uh, uh, that has a uh, significant uh, good UI. I must say I'm pretty impressed with the HP uh, for this purpose like they, they built a very very good smart error utility so you can see uh, how cool is that it was like uh, uh, more like a OS it's been loaded into the into your ROM uh, RAM and then and uh, you can see the coolest stuff and you can manage your rate controller from here as well so it will take a while and just hold on for me so meanwhile, it's booting up. Uh, so we can we can go through with uh, some other uh, features of the like uh, here from here. You can upgrade the firmware. You can upgrade the. Uh, you can do the user management. Like uh, currently, we have admin, administrator, and HP admin. These three three users. We can create our new users as well. We can do the directory groups as well, and we can allow the permissions. Like uh, we can allow the a user to reboot the server we can allow to the, go to the bios and ilo settings and we can allow, uh, we can allow them to configure the uh, user management uh, from here we can uh, ensure uh, the level of access this is default uh, we can change it uh, like remote console port web and non ssl port i would suggest not to change because if you are uh, if you are on a hosting provider so I would suggest not to change it. Uh, <clears throat> you will have some remote support like registration, like service events. You can uh, that will be used to debug the issues while you were facing. So uh, here is a cool, cool UI. Uh, it's a server. Uh, and it's a smart array. Uh, if I click on it, like it's a grid controller. You do. You, can you imagine that how cool UI it is? Uh, if I cl click on the configure uh, array, it will take me to the UI of uh, where I can see my physical drives that I have uh, two ports attached to it and where I have eight SAS uh, 2TB drives and uh, we have a, a one LV uh, logical drives. Uh, so you can see that uh, what I already done with that. So from here, you can manage the cache manager, controller cache, and you can do very cool stuff from here. Uh, from here, uh, I'm just uh, uh, deleting the array. OK, uh, from here, I'm going to delete the array. It will saying that all of the content are it's be will delete. <clears throat> so I'm just deleting an array and then I will click on finish. 
So I can see that uh, unassigned device is being raised to eight, and uh, I can I can choose it uh, like all the devices. So you can see uh, all LV is gone. So if I need to create an array, I can click over here and I can select uh, four from here, four 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 from here, and then I can click on the create array. It will take me to the uh, like RAID console, uh, I would need to create a, a RAID file uh, with 256 1 MB cache, full strip, uh, and the sector size is 32, uh, 32 bytes, not 63. And caching is enabled, so all, all together I will have 12.7 uh, TB. Uh, even I can have some custom size uh, which is near to uh, around, but I would suggest to go with the, this option. Uh, I'm I'm just uh, uh, choosing parity parity initialization. Like parity drive is the one which can be you can say that it will, it will be on the standalone or uh, so. Caching is enabled. Uh, so if I uh, click on disable, so it will it it will sometime impact. But uh, it's a storage server, so I would suggest to have uh, enable caching. So from here, I can create on the logical create logical volume. And you can see I have 12.74 uh, TB uh, uh, from 14 terabyte. So I'm just clicking on OK. So from here you can see that 12.14, uh, 12.74 TB I'm we are receiving from a part of uh, 14 TB. Uh, the rest of the stuff is going to the caches, so we have <coughs> we will have 12.740 for our usage. And if I click over here, then I'll be kicked out from the RAID console. And then I need to click from here to restart the server. It will reboot the server. And it will take me to the uh, UI. It will reboot the server and take me to the uh, BIOS and the installation part. I have attached a, a USB bootable disk uh, to my server. If you would like to uh, mount an ISO drive, you can go to the virtual media and you can go to the image file and you can locate any, any of the ISO image. So I don't have right now because I'm using a, some USB stick. So I'm not gonna install from the ISO if you wish, so you can do it from here. But uh, in that case, you, it would take a long time because you are mounting your ISO from local system and installing it to the ribbon system. So uh, meanwhile, it's coming up uh, and it will re uh, definitely going to redirect me to the uh, installation of CentOS. I hope. Uh, this will help you to manage and understand the ILO concept or the remote management concept. So till then, uh, if you really like my videos, so uh, don't forget to share our videos and subscribe our channel. Uh, obviously, uh, we all have done some sort of installation uh, on the server. So let us clear. Uh, let me let me wait till the till the, till the installation windows comes and then uh, it will take like two to four minutes. It is the same window we just uh, saw earlier before we were, we were going into the smart area console. So you can see that I'm at the screen of installation.
So I just click on the install CentOS, it will direct me to the CentOS installer window. Uh, so you can see the console is coming up uh, I can just click on the continue uh, I just want to show you some stuff uh, like the installation source so it will be like installation disk now I'm going to choose the installation disk uh, 